Good morning, church. Good morning, it's a joy to be with you and to be in person with the worship team here. Uh, and we, uh, we're, we, we come celebrating this day. And we also want to be sure and let you know how welcome you are here. Uh, though we f feel like we've been pushed around and pushed out and uh, confined, 
uh, we are we remain that church that stays expansively explosively open that we are a place where all are welcome all are accepted and where all means all and so we're so glad that you joined us here this this say this space in our uh, facebook uh, community is a safe space for us to uh, come together and worship and share you can share comments we'll be talking about uh, how about it uh, moment that'll be that we'll have at the end of the service and what that will be but we, we uh, want you to know that, uh, that we have uh, moved into this, uh, this space. We're actually in the Munch and Mingle. And so what you see behind me is uh, the, you see that we did bring the, the banners of the saints. So you can see them standing just inside the room, but you see the glass. You see many of the walls that have, uh, uh, where they've had the wall taken away from the wainscoting. There are some pictures that you see here as you see uh, much of the, the things that have happened where we've, we've torn so much out. Uh, the, the board will be meeting this afternoon, we'll talk about that. And we'll be talking about the steps that we've got to take to, uh, to, to restore this, but also there'll be some things that we're needing to change in the room. Right now the room is just very empty as our workers continue to work. Uh, the floor will end up being redone, the stage will end up being torn out. This is our space. This is where we are, where you see us uh, now, and you see Salia sitting there at the at the uh, computer, and so we're all just kind of in this space together. But we, uh, what we, what we've discovered is, no matter the space we are in, God's Holy Spirit is always here, and so. We are here celebrating the spirit that is in this space, that is in this frame between, between you and us as we worship together. And so we want to remind you just of a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, in your, if, on the, the Facebook description, you can see the word see more. You see a few things at the top. You see the word see more. Click see more, and then you will see uh, the, a whole host of, of things open. Uh, you can find our e news link, and so you can uh, link to e news, and there you can actually sign up for our weekly e news. Uh, you also have opportunities to connect with small groups. You have opportunities to share prayer concerns and pastoral care concerns. Those come directly to me, and then I, I spread those back to the place. Places where they need to be, where it's where it's most important, and uh, we we have at the um, uh, this afternoon our governing board is going to meet. We'll be v meeting via Zoom. All governing board members have had the. You've got your uh, uh, link for this afternoon's meeting, and what we will be doing is uh, talking about the. Uh, we'll be talking about the, 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 the needs that we have in the church. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on as we continue to make sure that the church is suited uh, for our return while the pandemic is still going on and still hopefully winding down. Uh, we've got, that's, that's still with the building issues, that's been pushed out a good bit. We also will be talking about uh, various uh, opportunities that we have to be in service and the various uh, ministries that we, that we share here together. And so there's some exciting things coming to, uh, to Wellspring, and we want you to know that uh, we, we are ex incredibly excited. Following today's service, we have, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I was jumping ahead, still, got, still want to share with you Ma Holy Week. Maundy Thursday and Good Friday service are a live stream service that are going to be at, on Friday, April 2nd. So we're combining Maundy Thursday in with Good Friday for April 2nd at 7 p.m. And that'll be live stream right here on Facebook. And then on Easter Sunday, uh, join us for live stream at 9.30. Uh, that'll be here on Facebook. And so that'll be our, our celebration here. But then following that at 1130, we're inviting anyone who wants to come for a safe outdoor in-person gathering. We are praying that the weather cooperates with us and we will have our cross somewhere out front here and we will be uh, decorating the cross. So the cross that we have uh, you've seen it that has the wire around it and we come and we put our tissues in it. We bring it to life as we, uh, as we put ourselves into this, into this cross. So this is a great opportunity for us to, uh, to, to celebrate the season. Friends, we come together worshiping 
and in our worship today, we have two how about it questions that we want you to be considering. We're, gonna, we're still talking about brokenness. We're talking about hope that's beyond brokenness. But we're talking about some very serious things. And so the one question is, where have you seen God in the midst of the dark places of your life? Where have you seen God in the midst of the dark places of your life? And then there's a second question. And the second question is, when is who is someone who has walked through brokenness and come out on the other side to inspire you to live more fully? So be thinking on those. We'll put those up again from, uh, throughout the service uh, in the chat, and you'll have an opportunity to, put, uh, to, to simply add your, your information in the chat. Uh, if it's something that is so intensely personal that you wish you want only to communicate perhaps with me about, uh, you, can, you can put that, uh, you, you can go to our website and you can find a way to, uh, to, to email me directly. So, friends, we come together worshiping, and we know that in dark times, we know that in the times that we keep asking what is it that can get worse and we find suddenly something that's worse, in those times, we still find God. God's here. God's here offering to, to stand with us. God is in solidarity with those who are broken and those who are cast out. And when we experience that in our own lives, friends, this is the opportunity for us to meet God as we worship together. Let's begin in prayer as we bless this space. God, we come before you in worship under strange circumstances in a different kind of place. We were already in strange circumstances, Lord. And yet here we are in your presence, reminded of the fact that you are with us throughout the wholeness of our life in times of darkness and brokenness and in times of joy and celebration. And right now we experience a mix of that. Because it is hard to rebuild. It is hard to carry on ministry in this way. We didn't expect to have this be a part of our mission in this season of our lives. And yet, it's a reminder that you're with us and that we are richly blessed to have a space where we can come and worship you. Even those of us at home, it's not how we would pick it. But it is such a blessing to know that no matter what we face, and even when we might find ourselves at home, we can experience worship with the community. Open our hearts in this time to sing, to praise, to share in the chat, to just experience an openness in this place and a hope in this place. For we know, God, that you love this world. You love us the creatures in it. And we celebrate that love this morning. Amen.
praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Hi friends, it's Mr. Rodney here to bring you today's Kids Minute. One of my favorite Bible verses begins with, For God so loved the world. And as I think about that passage, and, and as I think about that, and as I've been thinking about it for this week leading into today for you all, and I started to think about truly, how do we go about measuring God's love? Well, I've been around the church and I found some items that we would typically use to go about measuring things. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that they might be able to help us measuring God's love. Well, the first item that I have for us is a picture. And I, as I think about a picture, I think about how we would use this to help go and measure out lemonade and helping us make lemonade for our students when we would gather over the summer because there's nothing better for summertime than to have yourself a nice delicious glass of lemonade. Again, cheap plug, I'm sorry, I'm just full of them. But I digress, I go, I go on to say this, is that we would use, use this, use a, use a pitcher to go about helping us go and make this, this great glass uh, of lemonade. And, and as I thought about this, I thought about this pitcher, I thought about, well, Maybe I can use this to help go and measure out God's love. Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. My cup runneth over. Well, if our cup runs over with God's love, or let's say our pitcher runs over with God's love, well, truly we don't need this pitcher because it's the measurements don't work out. God's love is overflowing. Huh, I thought this one would work. Let's try our next item. Well, I have with me a measuring tape and we would use a measuring tape to help with measuring things out for like, let's say we're going to go and build a bookshelf. So let's go ahead and make sure we get the right dimensions um, for that. Or even to using this for like a wheel, wheelchair ramp and going and making sure we make the correct cut for the length that we need for a certain piece of wood. I mean, a measuring tape is amazing and maybe we can use this to go and measure God's love. Well, again, scripture tells us that God's love is higher than the heavens. Well, if God's love is higher than the heavens, that's a that's that's a pretty good distance. And I only have 25 feet here, so that kind of yikes, that makes it a little bit tough. I mean, the measuring tape doesn't really help me measure out God's love. All right, well, on to the next one. This is my last thing and I hope it works and, and I wear this I wear this all the time and 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 it's a watch uh, and I, I 
I think a watch could work. I mean, because a watch goes and it measures out time for us. And I wonder, I think maybe we can measure how long God's love will last. Well, as I sit here and I look at my watch and I think about scripture, it tells us that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. That's a long time. And honestly, I don't think that my watch could truly measure, measure that out. I mean, at some point in time, I have to go and replace the battery. Wow, that is a very, 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 very long time. You see, again, scripture tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that who, whomever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. That's so beautiful to think about, that God would go and give up his only son, that he loves us that much, that, that when we go and think about that love, when we go and think about God's love, truly, as we went through and looked at three different items, it's immeasurable. God's love is immeasurable. And I hope that you would remember that no matter what happens throughout the course of your day, no matter if you feel like you've messed up, that God still loves you and that he will continue to love you. And my prayer is that you would simply remember and be reminded that reminded of this, that that you would go and experience that love, that you would ex be able to experience how wide, how long, how high, and how deep it really is for you. I hope you all have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I'm reading from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3, and 17 through 22. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north, from the south, some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities, endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love and his wondrous works to humankind. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
as we come in this season of, of brokenness, this season of uh, kind of seeing how dark the world has been and trusting that somehow the light still is shining in the darkness. So through a pandemic, through a winter storm, through the various trials that we've experienced in our own lives, uh, individually and as a family, we know it's been hard. And so what we do is we come here today to speak that word of hope and to ask that God might see us and enable us then to see God. So let us now go to God in prayer. God, in the midst of darkness, despair, we experience that those times of hopelessness, those times when we're really not sure exactly what to do next, we're not sure who is with us, sometimes we're not sure who is against us, and sometimes we're uncertain as to where you are, and we confess that knowing that your love and grace is big enough to hold that. And we come offering ourselves to you today that we might hear anew this, the message of your abiding presence. Because it was you, O oh God, who in the beginning came into a world that was more chaotic than this, into a world that did not yet have true form. And you formed creation, and you breathe your being into all of creation, and most especially you breathe your spirit into us, into your children. So we come as spirit bearers, saying that sometimes the, the load is weak, and sometimes we wonder what we're carrying, and yet we know that we've come to this world to bear your spirit, to witness to your work in this world, even when we are troubled ourselves. So we pray, God, that you might speak to us, that you might come mightily into your church, this church scattered, this diasporan church, that you might speak to us and call us and use us and unite us and give us the voice that is the voice of Christ it is the voice that speaks hope to those who are downtrodden, who speaks of a future to those who have no vision of a future at all, to the hopeless, who speaks of justice, not some future justice, but justice here and now as we stand in solidarity with one another and we make sure that we understand who we are who we are called to be as we stand against injustice, evil in all its forms that we see in our very world, in our communities, in our governments, in our churches. And we pray that you bless us, that we might let that spirit speak through us. So we pray, God, that in the midst of the darkness there we might find you continuing to empower us to be your church, enlivening the Christ that is within us, that is working through us, that is working in our community and in our hands. And we pray that as we see this Christ, we might be reminded of this Jesus who came to teach us about your way, a way that was very foreign to religious establishment. It was a way that sought to connect with the poor in meaningful ways. It was a way that sought to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of peace, the beloved community into being. And while it's a task unfinished, we look at this one who is the architect 
of all of this and we follow this Jesus as our Christ who speaks Christ into us today to continue that task that indeed you your will will be made known on earth as it is in heaven because that's a prayer that Jesus taught us he taught us to pray boldly he taught us to act boldly he taught us to be your children and then when we stood face to face with him and we could not find the words Jesus said speak this our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. The gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, or sorry, John, about how much God loves the world. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come to the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come into the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's good to be here with you and to be recovering from Okay, let me try that again. My mic in a different place, and I'm wearing this massive belt that I still wear, and it's under my robe and holding me tight. Um, so it is good to, to be with you uh, following surgery. I um, have to confess, though, that that as as time drew near for surgery, uh, that I was, I had some fear uh, going into surgery, and I've, I talked to my worship team about this and had shared a bit, and um, this was my second back surgery. I've had other surgeries in my life besides this. My confession, though, is that I was a little more than tentative about this surgery. Uh, but not for the the reason that you might think. It's it, there's always there's always some good uh, fear to to going into surgery that we all have. But you see, here's the thing. My story uh, parallels my father's story a bit. My dad also had two back surgeries in the exact same spot, in the exact same order, and his surgeries were only uh, were, were about two years apart. Uh, where mine were nine years apart. My father's, uh, my, my father's second surgery went well, but it seemed very likely that he had a throat infection that was literally pushed into his lungs when they intubated him, and he ended up with pneumonia. And uh, I was with my dad just before the breathing got labored and before the pneumonia really set in. And... Um, his last words to me were, uh, well, I've outlived my father and his father, so um, I guess that's something to be thankful for as a smith. My dad, however, never came off the ventilator. 
Uh, he died a week later. You can imagine the reality that, uh, that, that had me somewhat worried then as I uh, was uh, preparing for surgery. Even though his death was due to a complication that was something I did not have, I remembered my very last thought being of my dad as they moved me to the operating room table and gave me the injection that put me under. I have reflected on that moment for the last six weeks since my surgery. It's brought me to a deeper awareness of something, that we are called to hold all things in tension, despair and hope, darkness and light, life and, resu- life and death and resurrection. The journey has confirmed once again for me that it's not possible to experience the fullness of hope in life until we have faced and embraced the darkness of death. So I want you to hear that again. This is my, my learning of the last six weeks, is that the, the capacity for me to, to, to embrace the fullness of life, to experience the fullness of life, comes only when I have embraced the darkness of death. Let us pray. Oh God, you call us to unique places. You call us to be your people. You call us to um, speak a word of truth. And you call us to the dark places. And we pray that in this time we might understand how it is that we can embrace the darkness, embrace the brokenness in such a way that we discover within it the specter of hope. So we pray that you bless us in our worship. And may the words that we share, no matter how far apart we share these, we are when we share these words, and we pray that our collective heart together, gathered here in this sacred space, this sacred digital space, might truly be acceptable in your light, your sight, for you, O God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we begin to look at this passage in John, uh, we find ourselves in the middle of a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus has come to Jesus under the cover of darkness. He's a Pharisee who knows all of these things, and uh, he comes to find out more about Jesus. He has acknowledged that there's something unique about this Jesus, and his teaching and signs are, are something that just stand out. Um, Jesus then talks about being born again, and Nicodemus doesn't understand that. He talks about being born by the Spirit, being born, by, born anew. This type of language is foreign to Nicodemus. Then in the midst of all this talk about being born, Jesus shifts and begins to talk about dying. He shifts this image. And uh, so... The, uh, the, the image that he now brings is an image of uh, something that Nicodemus would have seen, would have known. It's the story from Numbers where uh, Moses is holding a bronze snake in the wilderness. And it's a story of Israel uh, on their journey from bondage to the land of promise. And then amidst this is their chronic complaining. I address that uh, that. that text that that scripture in one of my devotionals this week in my blog and as the children of Israel complained of how bad things were suddenly things got worse as snakes suddenly were biting and killing them and uh, of course we re- we hear this uh, the, in the blog I, I try to treat the conversation about this but God sent the snakes the snakes were there they regardless of how they got there and, um, you, know, you know, as I think about the snakes, I think a lot of us have felt this way after enduring the, the 10 months prior to a pandemic and uh, thinking that we were, uh, that was about the worst that could happen to us. And then the winter storm hit, one unlike many of us have ever seen. Uh, the people repented of their sin against God and Moses and then God uh, told Moses to place a snake on a stick, which Moses made of bronze, held it up in front of the people, and those who had been bitten by the snakes looked at it and were healed. 
And so when we wonder why there are snakes uh, on our uh, health care uh, uh, organizations, on their, their uh, badges, that's what that's about, the symbol there. They're healed. And Jesus says to, uh, to, to Nicodemus that the human one, this one who comes as the incarnation of God, the same thing is about to happen. But the image of lifting up is not the image of like just holding me up, getting up on, on a scaffold and everybody getting to see me. It's an image of crucifixion. It's, it's uh, the this, this son of man on a stick, like the, like the snake was on a stick and is held up in front of us. And looking on that image of death, he says, is the beginning of our journey toward life. Birth death, rebirth, when these are held together, they create the tension that reflects the reality of, the, the, of, of human living. It reflects our reality. It's about how we embrace both our living and our dying. John here is talking about how Jesus, the John the gospel writer, is here talking about how Jesus sees his death how he embraces the darkness of his death, yet how he is focused on the light that is beyond the darkness. And I think that's so powerful, so important for us to hear. It's the capacity to see the light beyond the darkness, the overwhelming darkness, that enables us finally to see hope beyond our brokenness. It's what pulls us beyond our dualistic mindset. You see, we have this tendency to see our world as black and white, good and bad, saved and damned. And it's in this narrative that we have the famous line, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. And we've, we've heard it sung, we've, Rodney shared about that. It's the gift of life beyond our perishing yet we still want to restrict it. So I also have written in, in this week's uh, devotionals uh, that the most important line to me might be the next one. God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And I think that's important to hear. Those who spend so much time focused on condemnation those who are trying to figure out who's, who's in, but more importantly, who's out, are the same people to whom Jesus here refers as loving the darkness rather than the light. When we are focused on the darkness, it tends to color every other aspect of our living. The story of the Israelites in the book of Numbers is a story of people who could see nothing but darkness. And because they saw nothing but darkness, their world began to fill up with snakes. God's message to them was to look at the darkness for what it is and then to disarm it by looking at it, gazing at it, embracing it, befriending it. We're not worshiping it, but we are treating it as a pathway. You see, the, the psalm that we read is a psalm that, that speaks to that very thing. It's about, see, about uh, lifting up God and, and, and praising God, but it's also about our capacity to, uh, to, to see life as it is, to understand the brokenness and to cry out to God and to, uh, to be those even who sometimes complain to God and then to come back and see that God is still in the midst of it. Many of you have heard me uh, talk about the universal Christ by Richard Rohr in the accompanying podcast known as Another Name for Everything. Their fifth and final season just ended last week. Uh, it was, uh, and it was in one of those podcasts, I don't think it was the very last one, it was in uh, one or two prior, uh, that um, we, we heard Bree Stoner, uh, who was one of the hosts, begin to talk about how, how we often tend to idolize and worship the, the passageway instead of that which is beyond the passageway. And so, so often we, we, we look at darkness, we look at the, the brokenness around us, and we, we somehow pathologically want to just live in that. We have people who do that. 
you know people, I know people who, uh, who, who would prefer the sameness and the, ex, the, the, the kind of expected role that's going to happen with, with chronic illness or with, uh, with any kind of, of brokenness that we might experience. And they focus so much on that that they miss what it might be telling them about something else that we idolize that passageway. So in referencing C.S. Lewis's book, The Chronicles of Narnia, especially the first book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Bree Stoner was commenting on this, and she said this, we are wandering around, and someone comes and tells us about a wardrobe. We follow the person up the stairs, and we come to this room where we find a group of people camped out in front of the wardrobe. Lots of Groups of people camped out in front of the wardrobe. They are all there to worship the wardrobe. And they have lots of maps about how to get to the wardrobe. How do you, how do you get there? The, do you take the back stairs? Do you take the front stairs? Does the wardrobe have three hinges or four? Is it painted or is it not? And we turn the wardrobe into wardrobe-ism, she says. And at some point, either a mystic comes forth from the wardrobe or we gather up the courage just to go into the wardrobe. At this point, the maps are useless. They got us here, but once we are in the wardrobe, we are in Narnia, and we have to trust our own experience and walk in that trusting faith of unknowing, embracing the mysterious. And that was so powerful when I heard her say that. When we see our own brokenness as a pathway when we see it as a threshold, then we are capable of seeing and living into then the hope that is beyond the darkness, beyond the brokenness. There are many people who have had this kind of vision, many who have been part of our own church. We've talked about the saints that are here behind me that you see uh, all the streamers that are back here and trying to point without not mirrored, but uh, all the streamers that we have here. And um, we, we have so many saints. Uh, we have uh, some who have died during the pandemic. Some have died uh, with COVID, but we have some who have had other conditions. Uh, one of the people who, um, who really touched my heart in this time, and so many have touched my heart, but one person who just... Her, her way of, of wisdom taught me something, and that's uh, Lynn McCourt. Lynn and Steve became part of our church family probably about three years ago, and I really got to know them when I led the class on the Universal Christ uh, in 2019. One of the things I learned quick, quickly was, first of all, that they uh, had a Catholic background and that they were very well acquainted with Richard Rohr and uh, had, had understood uh, mysticism, understood uh, the wisdom traditions. Lynn, in her own way, was a contemplative. She was someone who seemed to intuitively uh, see the, the wholeness of life, the good and the bad, and appreciate how God used that wholeness to shape our lives. Lynn dealt with cancer, and her breathing could be become very labored. During the pandemic, she and Steve were very careful uh, to keep her protected, but she continued to decline. And when I spoke last with her, she was having serious difficulty breathing. She was gasping for air, but all I could hear in her voice was love and a true appreciation for life. If she complained, I never heard it. She, I don't think she had any illusions about suffering or death. She didn't have any illusions about brokenness and what that meant. But she faced it all knowing that somehow it was part, a bigger part of God's picture. And it's God's creative presence in our world. And she saw that as somehow a part. And there are so many of our saints who have done that and who have, uh, uh, have exhibited that for us. I called Steve this week to ask his permission to share this part of her story and he graciously agreed. Upon her death, it occurred to me that her witness, like so many of the saints of Wellspring, was a unique and authentic witness of faith. That's the definition of faith. 
is being able to see the bigger picture no matter what we're facing. To be able to see where God is in the moment no matter what's happening to us. It's about seeing brokenness, suffering, and death as, as they are and trusting that God has come to convert them into thresholds that lead us to a, a glorious hope, a life that is resurrection, a hope that is beyond our brokenness. Amen.
in my hand a bulletin insert of which most of you are very familiar with this and it is dated March 15 2020 which means it's been one year since we had in-person worship and how I long for that to happen again I know you do but a year I don't know it seems uh, sometimes time passes fast but I don't think this past year is passed as fast as we wanted it to. And certainly, and pun intended, the middle of February was certainly a blast. And it uh, blasted our budget a little bit, and your budgets too. And so again, I just ask that we have some catching up to do, but we have the rest of the year to do it. And so again, I thank you for your faithfulness in your financial support of Wellspring and its ministries. And we're moving forward. All our bills are paid. Our obligations are met. But we do have some catch-up to do, and we will do it. We always have, and we will again. So thank you. Let us pray. God so loved the world. My goodness. And it is a broken world. It got broken back in the garden. And we, your children, seem to keep breaking it best we can, the air, the water, even the seas, even the oceans, which we thought were, you know, abundant forever. We're polluting. So help us to love the world too. And help us to know that you love us beyond measure. You love us regardless. You love us with a steadfast love that there's nothing we can do to make you not love us as well as there's nothing we can do to make you love us. You just plain love us, and we thank you. You bless us every day and help us to wake every morning with grateful hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
So how about it, church? We're called to be people who see all this around us, to see our brokenness, to see the, uh, the, the hardness of living that we experience. And we're called to be the people who, um, who, who embrace that, who, who see that as a threshold to where God is at work and where God can take us in this hope that lives beyond this. So uh, you're invited to, uh, to respond. And we have a couple of different ways to respond. First of all, you can respond in ways that don't have to do with this responding in this worship service. You can respond by uh, making a phone call, by talking to, uh, to uh, friends that, that need to hear this word of hope. But following the service, we are going to have a how about it uh, moment following the, the postlude. And so uh, there are two uh, questions that you uh, see here that, uh, first of all, is where have you seen God in the midst of the dark places in your life? And then the second one is where have you seen God in the midst of the dark places of your life? Sorry, that was the first one. Who is someone who has walked through brokenness and come out on the other side to inspire you to live more fully? And so that's the, uh, the those are our questions, and uh, we don't, you don't have to share details you're not comfortable with. The other thing is we're aware that for some people there has been some serious darkness, and uh, the, uh, we, we have resources. Uh, you certainly can call us, call uh, me. You have Andy, who is our director of worship and pastoral care and is, a, is an LPC intern. And so uh, we have uh, resources available for people who really are experiencing some significant darkness. But in this space, this is a time for us to talk about where we experience it and maybe where we see God at work. So this is our time to reflect. It's your time to respond as, as we sing. So friends, we, um, 
we conclude our service here, remember we have the how about it, and you can always, it's, it's easier for us to find those how about it comments, I forgot to say this, with hashtag how about it, I don't say the A, <laughs> H-O-W-B-O-U-T-I-T. And uh, we will uh, have that time of conversation following the postlude. But for, for us now, we, we conclude the service. Go in peace. And may the brokenness and the death and the dying that you experience, may it be that which lets you glimpse the glory of God that is beyond our brokenness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 It's a joy to, uh, to welcome you back. And I will say again, it's a joy for me to have a chance to be back in this space worshiping, even though it's not the space we started in, it's the space we got pushed to, but uh, to, in this space to worship with these leaders that you've seen and these that you've not seen. And uh, it's just been a, it's been a, a great blessing to, to have this opportunity to share here today. So We're glad to have you back. I'm glad. To, I'm glad. To, I'm very glad to be back. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we. Um, I think we have some that we're going to be putting up. Some how about it's and uh, Andy and I are simply going to respond to those. And so, there we go. So from uh, Claire Thomas is uh, the year before my husband Mike died. My former coworker lost her spouse unexpectedly. God sent her to me to help me walk through grief, and after two years, she is still there. Yeah, I think that's oh, his presence. The, I just feel I'm almost overwhelmed by that sentiment, Claire. I, I know that story a little bit, and, um, you know, we, we never know how the brokenness we walk through is going to shape us as people. And while I think our theology at Wellspring goes away from the idea that God puts us through terrible things in order to teach us a lesson. I don't think we believe that. Mm -hmm. But we do believe that the things that happen in life that cause us to experience deep grief and suffering and brokenness are the very things that Jesus can transform in order to equip us to connect with people in ways that we otherwise would never be able to. And so your friend was equipped in her grief to travel that grief journey with you and to be able to do that in an authentic way and to make you feel like you weren't alone. And the power of that is just, I feel, is so overwhelming. And I don't see how we get there without the love of God transforming those moments of grief and suffering. And it, it, I think it's, it, that's where empathy is born, right? I think it's, mm. it's where we experience empathy uh, because someone who has experienced that who who is able 
to identify out of their own experience of loss without making your loss be exactly like her loss. You know, that's, that's something that is, is a great gift when you experience that. And, um, yeah, and I think, uh, and Andy touched on it, it's, it, God, God, doesn't, God doesn't bring all these things into our world to test us. These things are in our world, and they become a test for us. You know, they become, more than that, I think they become opportunities to learn. And so, uh, for us, you, you know, we, we could really be focusing on all the darkness of, first of all, you know, and I've said this, we, we, we lost our in-person worship. We got down to having a very few chairs in the room, and we, we created the space more as a studio space, all kind of condensed into one area. And we got used to that, and then suddenly that, that's gone, and, and we're now out. We showed you the pictures. We're now out in our Munch and Mingle area. But in the midst of it, in the midst of it, you know, there's this kind of call to me to say, uh, it's, it, it, Jesus is right. These, these buildings are just buildings. Not one stone stands upon another eventually. And in the midst of it, where is God? And God is in your friend. God's in the person that comes and walks alongside of you. And that's the church. Yeah. Whether they go to Wellspring or not. And may we as a church foster relationships that go that deep. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We have another one from Martha. Uh, Amen. My mother lived many of those same circumstances and was a witness and companion in faith to me. Yeah. Yeah. Martha, you you have uh, your your uh, uh, witness is so powerful, and as you've preached and the things that you share, uh, so important and so powerful. And we are when you have that that witness and that companion, even if it's the companion who is the one you're losing, the one who dies. Uh, sometimes there's even something to be taught in death. And I know Martha. Martha has proclaimed that kind of message, and so that's why she and I are friends. It's a, it's a great witness. Thank you, Martha. Amen. You want to take this one? Sure. Our friend Letty, my good friend Letty. My mother who survived years as a military wife with frequent moves, several major strokes, loss of her vision and control of her body, yet she radiated God's love, ministering to her caregivers and her family by her very being. I've seen this happen. I've had the, the honor and the privilege to visit Wellspringers when they've been in the hospital before. And I have seen how y'all witness to the people who are caring for you in the graciousness that you offer in the midst of serving uh, or being served in that way, um, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of pain. Mm-hmm. And I've seen what that does for people. I've stood outside of of those rooms, those hospital rooms. And I've had the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff that have come by and said, this person's really special in here. They've been cracking us up all week or they always have something interesting to say or, you know, with Erlene, uh, Erlene Scott comes to mind as one Mm -hmm. of those people where you you go and the people that are caring for her, caring for her, are being cared by her. And Letty, your mom seems like that same kind of person yeah. What, what, a, what, a, what more powerful witness could there be right. than to be true to yourself and honor who you are in Christ in the midst of suffering, the, the witness of what that is, the power of what that is. It was obviously important for you. I'm sure it made a difference in those people's lives. Oh, to live that way, um, that, I aspire to that one day. And I think that's the, that's the image of the, 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 the saints uh, for mm-hmm. those who uh, do not go here, what you may not know is every one of those streamers mm-hmm. that you see on these, uh, on these two standards that are in, just inside the sanctuary, um, the, uh, and some of you may have heard, may hear it through the mics, the fountain came on. Um, so the, the, the flow, <laughs> it's a great image, the flow of, their, of the witness of their faith, so many of these people have touched lives. And so, you know, when I go and stand in front of those, especially those who have died during my time here, people that I know and have, have, have shared with, there's some people that I've loved very dearly that are on, whose names are on those standards. And they're people who so often did care for the caregivers and uh, just uh, love the family and invite the family into the sacred space of suffering and dying 
and uh, let it be a moment where God can be known. So, we have another. Melissa Jones. Go ahead, Andy. My someone who has inspired me would be my Aunt Nancy. I have an Aunt Nancy too, by the way. That despite more health issues than one can name, uh, than one can name, and life's ups and downs always has a smile and positive attitude. I strive to be like her. Where have I seen God in the dark places? Uh, it would have to be my grandchildren. They help me see the hope of tomorrow. Uh, that that last one is powerful too, um, and that's something that really resonates with me as well. Is we're going through some dark times, and uh, as much as being a parent in a pandemic is really, really hard. It's really stressful. You feel like you never have any time uh, off in some ways. And at the same time, the blessing far outweighs, you know, because things are really crazy in the world, sometimes really dark in the world. They feel really hopeless. But then you have these little kids, these little beacons of light, and they're innocent and they're loving and they see the world with open eyes. Yeah. But also... Uh, they're just not jaded in the same way. And it yeah. definitely inspires me the same way it inspires you, Melissa. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and I, I did know that. I think that's, that's um, I think what we're, we're, we're looking for is that, that, that specter of light that's in our world. And it's an opportunity to see where, um, where God's really at work and uh, to see how, how God can be... Uh, amplified through the lives of so many people. So thank you very much for sharing. Okay, my mother is an, this is Jenny, mm -hmm. my, my other friend. They're, they're all, you're all my friends. <laughs> my mother is an inspiration on living more fully. She was born in Ireland in 1924 and was just a child when her father abandoned her mother and the three children he had fathered. My mother was sent to England to live with her grandmother till her own family moved to be with them years later. I've never been clear on why just she was sent, but maybe they thought her grandmother could only handle one girl. <laughs> my mother went on to become a war bride, marrying my father who was serving in World War II. She went on to lose her first child, but gave birth to eight daughters and was a model of strength and tenacity. Whatever brokenness and trials she faced in her life, she never lost her faith in God. It was always so strong. I miss her and often don't feel I measure up to living as fully as she did, but she does inspire me. There are, there are those people that we come across and their lives are almost unfathomable, unfathomable with all the things that they've overcome and that they've made it through. Uh, and yeah, I, I hope you don't diminish your own life and witness, Jenny, because you're a, a powerful witness in the life of our church, a good friend to me and to many here. And, uh, but yeah, for us to all be inspired by a person whose life, by its very nature, by its very story, says that, you, that we can overcome, that with God's help, mm -hmm. we can make it through in incredible circumstances and things that uh, I'm sure she could have never imagined or never expected going through, and yet mm -hmm. she made it through to the other side of that brokenness to live a powerful life of witness. Yeah, and, and the thing I would add to it, Jenny, is the, uh, the legacy of your mother, I see it, I uh, see it in you, but also being friends on Facebook, I see it in that for, a formidable, formidable group of sisters when y'all yeah. gather <laughs> and realize that you are a, uh, y'all are a group that together has this incredible witness of what family is and how uh, you, you can, can proclaim that, that gospel message that your mother passed on to y'all. And so I think that's something just... Uh, amazing, and it's a it's a blessing to to see that for me. Yeah, her, her grandmother might not have been able to handle a lot of girls, but she sure did. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, exactly. From Kathy, um, Laura evacuated New York City March sixteenth, twenty twenty, and lived with us in Texas one year before recently returning to New York City on March fifth, twenty twenty one. During our time of pandemic quarantine, Laura and our family reconnected with Wellspring so that we could do virtual church together, and it's been sustaining time of worship and hope for all of us. This morning, uh, we Zoom attended Wellspring together, 
uh, Laura in New York City and we in Texas, thank you, Wellspring. And yeah, well, that's just a touching, a touching uh, word there. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, Kathy's somebody that, uh, that I've been able to communicate with. And Kathy, uh, you, have a, you have a strong faith and you have a strong, uh, you speak strongly for justice and you speak for, uh, for, for how to change the world. And so uh, it's awesome that you have, uh, have had, had the chance to, to connect, reconnect with Laura during this time and then to, uh, uh, to just see, see how you can remain connected. We're trying to do the same thing. We're seeing this as an opportunity to, uh, to connect, uh, to use our digital means. Uh, even, even when all this is fixed up in here and when we're back, to, uh, back, into, the, the, back into the building uh, in in-person worship, one of the things that we know is that we have people in this community, in this virtual community, who don't live here and who yet are very much part of us. And so we feel that connection. And what you do is you've given us the capacity to see light that is beyond the darkness. You are the light beyond the darkness. So why don't we close with prayer? God of abundant and abiding grace, be with us. Remind us of the connections and of the people who inspire us. Remind us of how it is that you can teach us through others and through our own experiences in this world to live into that darkness in such a way that it becomes the threshold that leads us to your light of hope. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Friends, go in peace. See you next week.